What do you guys make of that? Well, I, Kurt's the perfect guy to ask the question because yeah. of what Kurt went through. And I remember, first of all, Nick also said that he, in one moment he woke up in the morning and said, I don't want to throw a football anymore. He truly had that moment. Kurt came on our show down in Canton, and he said, we asked, was there ever a time you said, I'm just kind of done? And he said, at one point, I was with the Cardinals, and I was running scout team, and I was backing up Matt Leiner, and here I am, an MVP Super Bowl, and I'm running scout team, and I just thought, come on, what am I doing? And he almost turned it in. He almost hung him up. So he stays in, he gets to the Super Bowl, all that. The two of them have a lot in common. If Nick Foles manages to win this game, it is one of the greatest stories we've ever seen, Kurt Warner included. It's that good. It's an amazing story. I did my uh, production meeting for Fox with Foles, and that was when he first really revealed it to me that he considered retirement. And then he talked about it. He said for four days he went on a camping trip with his brother-in-law. Mm. He said they didn't talk about football. They didn't pick up a football. He had just been cut on national TV on Hard Knocks by Jeff Fisher from a 4-12 and Rams team. He said he just put it all behind him, and he said he spoke with his wife. His wife was very key. His wife, Tori, said... You love this game. You have a passion for this game. You have to find that passion again. Picks up the phone himself and proactively calls Andy Reid oh, wow. mm-hmm. and says, hey, coach, like, I'm, I'm ready to go if you want me. Reid brings him in and the rest is history. But an unbelievable story of a guy who's been honest about this. A lot of times these players have these insecurities, these vulnerabilities, and he was almost talking about it as if there was a mental health thing there where he was like, I didn't want to get out of bed and play Depression. football anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And instead, he finds that love, finds that passion. It is an amazing story. And the fact that he has the courage to talk about it on this open stage about losing your passion and finding your faith in God, your faith in family, and faith, finding your faith in your actual desire to play, it's a really cool story that isn't as macho and talking about X's and O's. It's a kind of it's vulnerable. vulnerable story, oh, yeah. which I, I love. I oftentimes compare the relationship between an athlete and the sport that they love like a relationship you're in with another person. And I think all athletes are like that. You know, I fell in love with the sport and I looked at her as a woman. And it was a woman that I had a crush on. It was a woman that my father dated and I wanted a woman just like my father because yeah. he was a ball player. And that's every single athlete. And just like relationships in real life, you go through these ups and downs where you look in the mirror and you say, I don't want to be in this relationship. I don't like the way she's treating me. I don't like the way I'm treating her. I don't like the love that we're reciprocating to each other. And then you have to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I want to make this work. And oftentimes, like you said, players aren't as transparent. And they don't want to wake up and be honest with themselves. But it's an everyday battle. Just like working in our relationships that we have with our family and our friends and our loved ones, it's a battle every single day. There's days where you wake up, you walk into work, and you think to yourself, I don't want to get hit. I don't want to lift. I don't want my coach to yell at me. I don't want to study this film. But then you remember, it's a blessing. I get paid a ton of money, and people will give their left leg to work this job. What a journey for Nick Foles. Wild.